Later that <coughs> he was cheated. Is in your philosophers, especially philosophers of liberation, who see nothing but light at the end of the tunnel, not a train coming to crush us, see things in retrospect. Jane and Tom, Milam, and Sistinanga was good to Jane. So when I gave you home, that Mkaren Zampe were cheaters, drug stars, and killers, and Goma knew many decades back, but kept some tragic faith that things will change. A good politician does not do such. Goma left the Machiavellian touch that is necessary to politics. Why are you going to call for politics? Putting our own police. And to be a Joshua Kabongo Foundation, you know, one is such. Point number 11. It is obvious to me why you decided to form the 5th Brigade outside the structure and command of the National Army so that you may use it as a party and tribal brigade for eliminating and liquidating. As you have many times said, those who choose to destroy you are going to crush them. As a matter of fact, when I questioned the formation of the 5th Brigade outside the Zimbabwe National Army without consultation, you angrily replied and said, who are you to be consulted? This brigade, you said, has been formed to crush those who try to submit my government. And if you attempt that, they will crush you too. <coughs> this is Mugabe telling you. And this fifth brigade was planned far early in 1979, before the dissidents existed. So there was a long term and a durable plan to do this. The Kogura County Genocide was not accidental but was a plan and calculated. The plans and calculations were seen by Bomo long after he had disarmed Zipa and had the power to try by this genocides. The Cubans, Russians, and the Angolans had warned Kogu, even Chief Kaiser, but all were ignored. Kogu began to take advice from some British and American diplomats and Julius Nyerere, who had extreme contempt, hatred, and fear of Joshua Gomo. Nyerere feared and hated Gomo with his soul. And Gomo says it more than four times in this book. Whenever I was around, Nyerere was not comfortable. And Nyerere did a lot to support each genocide. Very like Silava Fanny Kempu, the Kogoga Pudula. A child, I'm a Chinese lesson. Uncle Moya was going to look so it came by his little tenor. The Tema Matabo Ava was a Mugula man armed a cutter. Right. Point number twelve, a second better, I think we must be the doctor in figure of a petal. This is Ugomo again. One of the most dreadful and shaming aspects of our independence, which is difficult to defend, is that we have taken methods and men used to suppress, oppress, torture, and kill our people and tried to use them to consolidate independence. You cannot take weapons, methods, and people designed to defend colonial fascism and try to use them to defend the people. It is just not possible. Today in Zimbabwe, the same torturers that Smith used against the people are back in business defending a people's government. They must smile to themselves when they are ordered to continue their torture of patriots by an independent government. You know it. About General Walls, Kendall Dyke, and many others. You can invite them and pretend that that is reconciliation. But he wanted their torture methods and their skills because he now had to deal with Zipra and Zafu. And no one was asking him, one of the commanders we could have was Kenneth Dan. Umkarwam came in to colonize what we do the power of Nuba and Jilan. Lagayon Saja. Our strategy is a crown deployment and everything. The same people with Rhodesia and security uh, uh, infrastructure were involved. Who came in with Zulipali, who came in with Story Kutmama? But guys, the way they're treating us in prison now, one of the least observed tragedies of Zimbabwean history is how Zambia and Mugabe became native colonialists. 
They even took over the Norwegian security and insecurity machinery in the name of reconciliation and used it against Gomo and Zap. Gomo, however, should have been the last person to be shocked or surprised by this. Point number 13, second from last. The real victims of uh, this climate of fear are the people themselves. How can the people get on with the vital task of building the nation when all around them they feel this insecurity and fear? At any moment, they know that this missionary of fear and repression may be turned against them. The people of Mreo may not yet have felt the violence of the 5th Brigade, but they have already heard the stories. In their faces is the fear that one day this party army may be turned against them. It is certain that some ZAN PF members fear that the 5th Brigade may be turned against ZAN and that it may even turn against its creators. Is this the climate of confident, free, proud and independent people in government? You do not teach young people to be contemptuous of human life and expect them to respect yours. <clears throat> Joshua Nkomo predicted the coup of 2017 here and predicted that Fukura will move to Mashona Land as well. There are many now in Mashona Land that they've been killed in political violence. Some of them that were key perpetrators of the Fukura genocide. And true to Komo's word, they did not respect Mugabe at the end of his life. And now they want to capture Amatambak. Why are you that? I don't know why Mnangako is obsessed with Amatambak. Komo as a liberation philosopher was prophetic. He warned Mugabe about the coup and observed that the other parts of Zimbabwe and as are going to experience political violence in the future. So Mkongo was prophetic and philosophical in his own way. But to my two mutu and tie Budalum Tom Dan. A pen you are say was what law of Lale. Unga Yerunda Nap two mutu of Dala Makelwa. Ksa has become gay in the same. The philosopher lay Kuma, as your command as your general. He was Kongo being a philosopher and a prophet, not a politician. Yet he should have known that Mugabe wanted him dead. He only ignored all the evidence. Another philosopher of liberation, Kenneth Kaunda, was impressed. Oh, saying it Right. Uh, point number fourteen. Despite the risk, I agreed. Despite the risk, I agreed to talk to Smith face to face in <coughs> absolute secrecy. This was 1970. 1978, 1979. Despite the risk, I agreed to talk to Smith face to face. I know In politics in general. In absolute secrecy, we met in State House, Lusaka, as the guest of Kenneth Kaum. I found Smith a tired man, a battered man. He told me he wanted to surrender power, to hand the whole thing over. I am convinced he knew the game was up, that the time had come to concede defeat. But I could not on my own accept his offer. I had to bring in Robert Nga, <laughs> my colleague, my colleague in the Patriotic Front. It was to the Patriotic Front that power must be surrendered and not Joshua Nkomo was a dad. <laughs> It was clear what if that opportunity had been given to Gabe, he was not even going to think about bringing him home. That's why in the open saying this is a philosopher of liberation who believes in good and greatness, honesty and fair play. And as a resilient quality. There is a reason why Smith was handing over power to Ngo. Okay, let me comment on this statement. Here was Gomo being a philosopher and a prophet, not a politician. <clears throat> Yet he should have known that Mugabe wanted him dead. He only ignored all the evidence. Another philosopher of liberation, Kenneth Kaunda, was impressed by this. And Smith was disgusted by him. <laughs> yeah, Smith was disgusted. 
and all that. Because the story that is written uh, when they were fighting this liberation struggle, there were many things that were being done traditionally. Uh, I think it's Patrick Gomai who wrote that uh, narrative. Uh, there are these traditional ritualists in Mashona land who knew Gomo is a leader and all that. In the Uganda, Gomo is not a Mashona land, not a material land. There's a very big camera that is leading to Mujimbo Chitenza. Oh, you boom, lose a very chunk of money, that's not allowed. So, we figure it will go down. When you are in Kubalana, 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 in fact, you talk about Tarawa Kutu and Kutu. You talk about Kutu and Zima, and you come out. But so to high himself and super league, you can tell me that you have a good one. You can tell me that you have a good one. You can tell me that you have a good one. Bichai fa. Right, um, the turning point strategy. This was also 1978 1979 when these talks were beginning to be talked about. When um, Usmith had offered the cut around the same time, I think in the space of weeks, Umtala is saying this in his book. I'm not told. Behind the scenes, a time bomb was ticking away. Nobody but myself and senior Zappo colleagues knew of its nature. A year previously, <laughs> Zappo and Zipla, in the closest secrecy, had decided that the war must be ended. The agony could not be allowed to go on. We had set in motion what we called the zero point strategy. For a transformation of the war from guerrilla war to full scale conflict in which we would match the Smith regime's armor and air cover with armor and air cover of our own, we had requested the Soviets to accelerate the training of our air crews in that country and to make available sophisticated modern aircraft which would strike in equal terms against Rhodesian strategic infrastructure. And the Soviets agreed and gave the Zipra tanks. Everything you can think of, you see our ballistic missiles now, Vladimir, Asha, now in Ukraine. Oh, my God, that's how we are so, because we can't have a little bit of a problem to count out, convince Uncle Mouti, I beg your pass, it's kind of here, like us, that's your group. Remember that is to do, that's how I try to hold from this door, to count. With all this machinery and the red trained uh, military personnel, <coughs> Komo took, took all those tankers or Abega Pass or Ahenda over to Ama Rutishi Zutazo Pele, the water scene, Kuluma, and Isitara in Lega Pass. That's where Kukura only began. What Oputin had done, at the time Oputin, I think, was a, a KGB a officer, they had given is Zipra uh, Zapru, a military infrastructure that was going to defeat the Rhodesians. British intelligence picked it. That's why they and other people ran to Kaunda to preempt a zero point strategy. Being a philosopher of liberation, believing in talk, not in war, or oh, we are told to Utamanya Makomanda as a man general, we are going to power of Kumdala. Just tools, sake, watching tandy cars. You get that. I want to conclude with my principal allegation. My allegation is that Joshua Gabugo Nyongo Logomo was a great philosopher of liberation, a statesman, 
and a failed politician and a tragic soldier. I insist that Komo was a great man that trusted his enemies more than friends. From him we can learn today what it is to lead with love and sacrifice, and that in fighting for the liberation of Zimbabwe from the genocidal native colonialists that are misruling the country, we must be good politicians and capable soldiers. The great successes and great failures of Joshua Ngomo must be the Bible of our present strategy. <laughs> uh, there was a, a professor in the Democratic Republic of Congo called Ernest Wambati Awamba. Uh, we are university one day, Wakumo Atati A.K. Waters Bamba. And there was an outcry, uh, outcry amongst other scholars who were busy conference with the prof. <laughs> who was going to teach our kids when we are now carrying an AK-47? But I'm doing this, putting books down and fighting because I don't want to allow Africa to fall into the hands of sorcerers. If anyone wants to see a country that has fallen into the hands of the sorcerers, should go to this country that we are talking about. Nyabo. Thank you.